that's in motion. How's it going, Exiles? My name is Ralph, and today I wanted to talk about the importance of challenges in video games, and specifically in Path of Exile, because I care about Path of Exile so much. <clears throat> Alright, so, the reason I bring this up is because the this whole idea of the race to level 100, but I, I want to take it beyond that idea of just the race to level 100, and I want to take it to the idea of just challenges in general, having these epic feats of strength that people can accomplish as players when they play a video game, these epic challenges, and why they're so important. And, and first of all, let's just talk about it from player perspective. Now, when you first start playing a game, it's really daunting, especially a game like Path of Exile. It's such a knowledge-based game, and it's very intimidating, and it's very hard at first to get into the game, and it's got such a, a high wall of information to get over before you can really enjoy yourself, and it puts off a lot of people. But the thing is, it still is such a successful game, and it still does so well, and it's from an indie company. How is that? It's... It's these challenges, it's these amazing feats of strength that you can conquer as a player when you enter the world of Rayclast. It's, <clears throat> it's, it gives you as a player this amazing goal to strive for. Like, you, you may be having a hard time now and you may be struggling now, but it, you, you know, maybe you just want to get through the game on merciless standard mode. Maybe you just want to get through the game on hardcore normal mode. That can be your challenge. That can be your feat of strength. That can be your epic journey. This really push your limits. Just beating the game. Just beating the game on hardcore in the first difficulty. Getting to level 80. Getting to level 90. But you know what? Even when you're doing these things, when you're you're a player and you do this and you hear about these things like it's Siri and you hear about these things like level 100 and you hear about these things like Uber at Siri. It creates this fantasy in your brain. It creates it creates this this amazing end game. This like this just you can't you can't even imagine it. It seems impossible to you. It seems crazy to you. And you see these these crazy goals that you can maybe reach one day if you play this game long enough, if you invest enough time, if you learn enough. And that's what makes a game like Path of Exile so amazing for us players. It because I've never gotten to level 100. But one day I might, and it's going to feel crazy, it's going to feel amazing. That's why I still push play the game so much, because I want to be better, because I want to be amazing in this world of Ray Class, because it's, 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 it's cool, and it's satisfying, and it really means something to conquer a challenge in a video game. It means something to conquer a challenge in Path of Exile, because it is a challenge. Because it's not just a, a task that takes into, you know a certain amount of just like mind-numbing playtime. It isn't like that, and that's... That is sort of the origins of my, you know, questioning of the level 100 situation. And you can take this from the idea, the standpoint of a player, the importance of these challenges, and you can put it to level of a spectator. Why these challenges are so important for video games from a spectator perspective. And <clears throat> let's, just, let's just take a look at something like uh, Twitch. Twitch is a good example. League of Legends. League of Legends gets an insane viewership, has an insane viewership because it's competitive, because you're watching athletes, you're watching esports. They call it esports for a reason. You're watching the best of the best. You're watching people do something that you can't do. They're in an elevated class of gamer. And here's here's you know the thing about that? They're they're like amazing, you know, they're athletes, they're the best gamers, they're the best of the best. If, and the idea is, when you're a little kid and you watch maybe the World Cup or you watch the Super Bowl and you watch these professional athletes, you watch the best of the best, you watch them and you, you just, you're in amazement. It's so captivating. It's so impressive. It's so cool. And you think to yourself, maybe one day I could do that. Maybe one day I could be one of the greats of this game. Maybe one day... I can get to level 100. Maybe one day I can kill Uber at Siri. And that is the importance of having these insane challenges as a spectator. A company like Grinding Gear Games, an indie company, doesn't have a lot of money for marketing. So do you know what you you know how this you know how they get free marketing? 
make insane challenges. Because when you make these insane challenges in these video games, that's when you get the best of the best. You get the best gamers. They're coming out of the woodwork because they want to see this stuff, you know? They want they want the challenge. They want to come to Ray Class and they want to see what it's all about. They don't want a, a little one-week race or they don't want something that they can just grind out mindlessly with just like enough time. No, they want a real challenge. And that creates free advertisement for the game because as a spectator, it's more fun to watch things like the race to level 100, to watch people try to do Uber at Syria and hardcore. It's fun to watch them do it because it just creates this amazement within you. It doesn't feel like something possible that you could achieve. And it's not just about, you know, oh, but these, these athletes, all they do is play video games all day. And you know, that's why you can't balance the game around them. It's not about balancing the game around them about the top players. It's about having something incredible for the top players to do. And currently that amazing experience, that amazing challenge that is there in Path of Exile is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and it's becoming less and less impressive because the monster power hasn't really gone up, and the player power has skyrocketed. The ability to get XP has become incredible, and yes, Havoc played all day. Havoc played all day, seven days, you know, he didn't sleep a lot, and it took him a week, and I've never got to 100. And, and sure, I couldn't get to 100. I don't think I should be able to get to level 100. As a casual player, as I am right now, I mean, I play the game hardcore enough, but still, as someone who's not really dedicating all my time, I don't deserve level 100. Because, it, and it gives me this sense of fantasy. One day, I'll dedicate enough time to PoE, and maybe I can get to level 100, and I can be one of the greats, you know, I can be the best of the best. It, it gives this amazing feeling. But as it stands right now, there, it's just it's just gotten easier and easier. And whether you say seven days, all day, every day, oh, they don't have a life. Guess what? Those same no-lifers used to play the game. They used to play the game for months and they couldn't get level 100. And that is what birthed PoE's initial popularity is, hey guys, come look at this game. It's ridiculously challenging. It's worth watching. Look at, with something like League of Legends, they're balancing, it's players versus players. So the challenge there, you don't need the AI to be difficult. You don't need the PvE content. There is not PvE content. It's PvP content. So you don't really need to balance it. You're watching athletes going head to head. And that's why people watch. The, def the difficulty sets itself. But in Path of Exile, the difficulty is with is with getting to level 100. So the difficulty is from monsters, but it's also, yes, you are racing against other people, so it is PvP in that way. But the PvE content, the thing that sets the limit of how difficult the race itself is, is not difficult enough in comparison to the player's skill. And yes, players know more. And yes, players play all day and they're hardcore. But it it doesn't matter how hardcore they were. Because it it wasn't possible in seven days like it is now. It wasn't possible like it is in a week. I I did um, Uber at Siri on standard because I was playing standard because lag issues and I had to do Uber at Siri because standard was just getting so bland. I did it in talisman and it really was just losing. It's, I, I would get, you know, I would grind it. Out. I grinded to like level 95 or something like that. And it was standard. So, I mean, it's really just time and getting good at not dying consistently, but I did Uber because I needed a challenge. I needed something that actually like felt worth my, my metal and my strength and like my, my, my gaming dedication. And I'll tell you, one day, it's on my bucket list for Rayclast, I want to do hardcore Uber at Siri, and it's probably going to be the hardest thing I'll ever do in a video game, just because the amount of preparation and time and intense, like, knowledge I'll have to have and the amount of execution in-game I'll have to be able to perform when, like, actually playing is going to be remarkable. But it's something I want to do because it gives me that fantasy. It gives me that epic challenge to strive for. It gives people a reason to watch when the, when the best of the best players play on Twitch 
when, you know, when the race to 100 lasts months or it lasts even the whole challenge league or something like that. People are going to be tuning in on Twitch. GGG will get the free marketing. Pe people want to watch this because it's impressive. They want to see the rips. Oh, this person got ahead of this person because this person died. This person came back because they had an amazing, efficient, supportive leveling setup. It wasn't just a weak race. It wasn't just, you know, this mindless grind and not sleeping. It actually meant more. That's why these challenges are so important. It makes the game more impressive to watch. It makes the game, it gives you a sense of, it gives you this sense of fantasy as a casual player that maybe you can strive for and maybe you can become hardcore and epic. Look at someone like Ziggy D who he started out in StarCraft and he really worked at it and he became like a very good StarCraft 2 player. Like that's, that's how he started doing the whole gaming thing is because he, he worked at it and he had never really done that before and then he became the best. And Ziggy D uploaded a video yesterday of his fight against Izaro. He was really underleveled, and he almost dies, and it's really epic, and it's it's a real challenge. His kiting is flawless, and he it it's a challenge. And he he says it's a hardcore experience because you know it's life or death. It's hours or your it, it's hours into this character, or the character is gone, and. He, you know, he finishes the fight and he just has a satisfaction, you can tell. And he's like, you just don't get that from other games. And that's the unique thing about Path of Exile. It's not a PvP game like League of Legends, or it's not IRL PvP like, you know, the World Cup or the Super Bowl in sports and that sort of thing. It is a PvE game that has mastered challenge. It's a PvE game that has, with the hardcore mode, has mastered challenge. That's what makes the game so unique. That's what makes the game so amazing. That is why people played Path of Exile back in closed beta, back in open beta, back at the release of the game. And if it loses that aspect of it, if it loses that epic challenge, that epic fantasy that it provides the player with, the game could fail. The game could lose what makes it special. This was a long one, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to everything I have to say. Put your opinions down below. The The challenges of Path of Exile are what make it so great and what make it such such an important game to me. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you so much for watching.